everyone, my name is Rachel and today I thought I would do a light, fun, silly little video that cannot possibly be controversial, I think, maybe, we'll see. Some people will still probably find something to complain about, but today we are going to be talking about the wonderful world of animals. And I love animals, I love reading books about animals, I love watching videos of animals, I love taking photos of animals, I love spending time with animals, I just, I love animals, I think they're great. Today I thought for a fun little silly short video I'd tell you about three incredible, awesome, amazing animals that you might not have heard of before, and if you've not heard of them, why not? Because they're great! We are going to start with this guy who is a red-lipped batfish. Now this guy is the inspiration for most of my makeup looks because, I mean seriously, look at that pout. Every girl wants a mouth like that, right? Right? Yeah, something like that. Red-lipped batfish like this little guy here, they live in the deep water regions near the Galapagos Islands and although they are fish, they are probably the least fish-like fish in the entire world. They're just not very good at being fish. They aren't very strong swimmers, they, they don't do it very well, instead they just kind of like stumble around the ocean floor using their little fins as kind of little legs and arms and it's a bit like a crab but not a crab. They're little carnivores who eat mostly small fish and mollusks and even little crabs so you know they eat them and they copy their walking style and as you do. And speaking of what they do with their mouths, ish I think, no one is quite sure why their lips are so big and so red and so sad looking but it has been suggested that it could be a kind of attraction thing, you know, to attract a mate and, you know, the bigger and redder their lips are, the more likely they are to find a mate. I personally just think they've been reading a little bit too much Vogue, they got a little bit overexcited with the lip liner, but that's just my opinion. But seriously, they might look a little bit bizarre, they might not be very good at being fish, but I think these guys are cool and awesome and I really like them and thought I'd share them with you. Next up I want to talk about one of my favourite animals in the world and I'm so surprised how many times I mention this animal and people haven't heard of them. And they are pangolins. Oh, these are adorable and they have little noodle tongues and they're just, they're so cute and I love them so much. Pangolins literally look like long-nosed pine cones because their body is covered in this like overlapping um, sort of sheath of keratin scales is really really strong as well. They have these long tails and long noses and when they get scared they quickly tuck their tail underneath them and roll up into a little ball and because of this strong keratin set of scales they have it's kind of really hard to sort of penetrate their defences, they're really well defended. It's kind of awesome really. But while they protect themselves they also attack. They have cute little hands, but at the end of those hands are sharp little claws. <laughs> These claws they use for burrowing, they use for climbing, and they also try to look threatening with them because Arr. they do find walking on their front hands a little bit difficult, which is why they tend to kind of like potter around on their back legs with their front arms kind of tucked up like this, digging around, looking cute. There's so much I could say about pangolins. But in the interest of keeping this video short and sweet, I want to mention one last feature, and it's my favourite feature. Their tongues. Oh my god, these, this is like the cutest part of them, I love this, right? So unlike a lot of mammals, because pangolins are mammals, their tongues aren't attached to their hyoid bone, and instead they like extend, extend right back into their bodies and like deep into the thorax, and because of this, it means that the tongue can kind of tuck up inside the pangolin or extend out really really far if the pangolin needs that, okay? It can literally extend out like 40 centimetres from the nose. It's ridiculous how long these tongues can be. And they're tiny as well. I think it's something like half a centimetre wide. They're really like long noodle tongues. Like when I say noodle tongues, I literally mean noodle tongues because that's what they look like. And their tongues are super super sticky as well. They release this kind of like saliva um, that's really like gooey and sticky. So when pangolins want a snack, instead of having to like go out hunting or whatever, they literally just come across an anthill or a hole in a tree or some kind of bug nest or even just stick their tongues behind a stone. They just pop their tongues in, give it a little wiggle around when they pull it back out. Because of the stickiness of the tongue, 
It's like, like a little buffet of bugs. Just everything is stuck to that tongue and they just swallow it. And because they probably picked up a few stones in there as well, the stones help grind it up in their tummies and digest it. And that's how they eat. I think it's kind of incredible. That's like no effort. And they just get this nice little buffet of bugs. Great, right? Sadly, pangolins are very endangered and there's a lot of conf conservation efforts going on to save them. So I would really thoroughly encourage you to go and kind of like have a read about that and find out a little bit more about it because it is really important. A lot of the time pangolins are hunted for their scales and their skin, which is a real, real shame and really sad. So if you are interested in finding out more about that, I put some links in the description down below and you can read about it and help save the pangolins. Please. The last animal I want to talk about is one that I swear would not look out of place on a Star Wars set. Their noses, their faces, they're so bizarre, but also just strangely kind of adorable. They're just... Please don't judge me for finding them cute. So these guys are cute and cool, but mostly I want to include them because they're another animal which is critically endangered. And there are a lot of things damaging their environments and them and it would be such a shame to lose such an incredible animal. So I thought I'd kind of raise a little bit of awareness about them and talk about them a little bit. And again, there's links to all the conservation stuff about them and just about them in general down below. So why do I like these guys so much? Well, these are called Sega Antelope. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I've only ever actually seen it written. Um, and just, just, just look at their little faces. Oh my God, they're so cute. Oh. So they are a type of antelope, but they have this bulbous, wobbly nose that like protrudes down further than their mouth. And they have these big, gorgeous deer-like eyes that just say, hug me. And I look at them and I do just want to hug them and just, oh, I'm in love. Look how strange and cute they are. I want one. Mm. And the cool thing is their nose isn't just for looking cool. It actually has a purpose, not surprisingly. They tend to live in pretty dusty areas. They're found mostly around like Kazakhstan and Mongolia and Russia. And because the areas they live in are quite dusty, they have these huge nostrils that are really like flexible and they can inflate quite easily as well. And this just helps them breathe clean air a little bit easier in really dusty areas. So it's useful and cute looking. As I said as well, it would be a shame to lose these guys because they have literally been around since the time of saber-toothed tigers and mammoths and this is a species that has survived a hell of a lot and it would be a shame to lose them now. My favourite thing about them is that how most of the year round they live in these smallish kind of groups or herds of around 30 or 40 of the antelopes and you know they have these little kind of family units and they kind of get along well but when migration season comes around you can sometimes see thousands of them, sometimes tens of thousands of them, all traveling together, moving in one go, like en masse. And I just, I think that sounds incredible. And just one day I would love to see that for myself, probably from above in a helicopter where I can't disturb them and they can't trample me. But it's still something I would love to see. And I just, oh, having seen pictures of it, it's amazing and wonderful. And yeah. That's, that's kind of all I want to say on this. So they are three animals that you might not have heard of, but you really should. They are the red-lipped batfish, the pangolin, and the Sega antelope. I think they're all incredible, and I just want to do this nice, fun, silly little video for something a little bit light. And also I think it's important to highlight the kind of endangerment issues and the conservation efforts surrounding these animals. Um, as I said, there's loads of links and stuff in the description below, so you can go and find out more if you want. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what other cool animals you think people should have heard of but probably haven't because seriously, there's so many out there and they're amazing and I love animals. I read so much. But for now, thank you so much for watching today. I really, really do appreciate you. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you so, so much everyone supporting me on Patreon this month. I can't believe the amount of support. It's amazing. A special thank you goes to Gambit and Ushorfa, Mark Garner, Christian Berg, Religion is BS, Matthew Minamar, Jaylee Moore, Sir Michael Moore, Lockie Scott and Jaden Shepherd. And a huge, huge thank you to all of them and everyone else who's here on the end screen and down in the description below. 